Hi everyone, this is Achuta Bhava from Nightlight Astrology, and today I'm going to give you a tour of my favorite astrology books. Now, I'm doing this because I get questions all the time about what kind of books would I recommend for beginners or for people who want to learn more about Hellenistic astrology or horary astrology or astrological philosophy. Uh, and so I thought I'd just make a video to try and cover um, a wide variety of different texts that I recommend that have made a big impact on me that you might enjoy. And I'll try to tell you whether I think these books are sort of beginner, immediate, or advanced. Um, so we are going to start with beginner's books. Um, these are books that um, I would recommend for total newcomers or total beginners. Uh, some of them I have copies of, some of them are in storage, and so you might see an image of some of the books, and otherwise I'll, I'll try to hold them up. You can purchase most of these on Amazon. Um, interlibrary loans may have other copies. Some are going to be out of print and more expensive, uh, so you should be able to find um, uh, most of these at your library. If you if you ordered it from a library, I think you'd be able to get it there too. But um, a lot of the good ones, though, are available on Amazon. So, okay. So um, I'm going to start with beginner's textbooks. And we're going to start specifically with like sort of if you're a total newbie, meaning you've just, you have zero astrological experience whatsoever. <clears throat> there's a few texts that I think are very, very helpful. One is called Astrology for Yourself, uh, a workbook for personal transformation, how to understand and interpret your own birth chart. Uh, this is um, by Demetra George. And this book has a lot of, um, just a lot of different exercises that you can do in getting to know uh, your birth chart. <clears throat> Some of this is a little dated. But for total beginners, I find that astrology for yourself is just a really nice, total, you know, fresh start kind of book. Um, there's another good one called Horoscope Symbols by Robert Hand. This is also a little dated. And these books are going to be a little bit more of a crash course in astrology uh, in, in the modern era, which is, differs quite a bit from an um, introduction introdu introductory textbook to say, Hellenistic astrology or traditional astrology, which sometimes can be a little intimidating for people to start with. And so, you know, even having just one or two basic modern astrological textbooks under your belt before you start into Hellenistic astrology can be really helpful. So <clears throat> Astrology for Yourself and um, Horoscope Symbols by Robert Hand. Another one by Demetra George that I really like that's nice for beginners is Astrology and the Authentic Self, Integrating Traditional and Modern Astrology to Uncover the Essence of the Birth Chart. So these are um, really nice textbooks by Demetra George that I would recommend. There is another book. It's <clears throat> very modern, but in terms of like very, very accessible, very, very easy, say, you know, a teenager could read it and follow along with it. There's also a book by Susan Miller called Planets and Possibilities. Now, I think that this book is chock full, a lot of cliches and, and some stereotypes, but it's also one of those books that you know, when I was first learning, it really helped me just to memorize and sort of integrate basic planetary concepts and sign concepts. And to a certain extent, even if you end up learning traditional astrology, having some idea of what kinds of modern stereotypes exist around the signs is, is actually helpful. So um, because you need to be able to differentiate in, uh, in terms of what, what people say and think about astrology. Um, so there are <clears throat> a couple of books I want to talk about next. So those are the, let's, so recapping on those, um, Astrology and the Authentic Self, Planets and Possibilities. Uh, um, let's see, what do I say? Astrology for the Authentic Self, um, Astrology for Yourself, uh, Planets and Possibilities and Horoscope Symbols. Those are good ones for beginners. Okay. If you're interested in learning about the history of astrology, Western horoscopic astrology, there is a book called A History of Horoscopic Astrology. Uh, and this is from the Babylonian period to the modern age. It's by James Holden. This is not too long, but it is a more scholarly read and you do have to like history to read it. And I think it's very interesting and it's my, my favorite astrological history book. So if you're interested in learning more about the history of Western astrology, that's your book. Uh, there's also a two-part series that's a lot more challenging called A History of Western Astrology, Volume 1, and A History of Western Astrology, Volume 2. And this goes from the ancient world through the medieval and modern worlds. And these, you know, this is, this is a two-volume set by Nicholas Campion. 
it's absolutely fantastic, but I will tell you that it is more, it's more of a, it's more of a project, right? It's, it's going to be more of your, <clears throat> it's going to be more of your academic style of reading. Uh, the next one that I would recommend if you want to learn about the history of astrology and cosmology and the world's religions all over the world, not just Western astrology, Nicholas Campion also wrote a book called Astrology and Cosmology in the World's Religions. And for example, <clears throat> you can learn about astrology and cosmology in Australia, Oceania, North America, South and Central America, Sub-Saharan Africa, Egypt, China, India, Babylon, Judaism, classical Greek astrology, Christianity, Islam, the New Age. It's a really nice reference for people who want to kind of learn about the history of how human beings have related to the universe, the stars, and astrology all over the world. I really like that book a lot. <clears throat> now, if you want to study, um, let's say, uh, good textbooks on um, uh, modern astrology. I'm going to go into traditional in a minute, but if you want to read some good modern astrological books, uh, the one of the first ones that I would <clears throat> recommend, again, more of a project, is Cosmos and Psyche, Intimations of a New World View. Um, this book is sort of the Bible of modern archetypal uh, psychology, cosmology, and astrology all in one. It's by Richard Tarnas. And in this book, he lays out what archetypal cosmology and astrology is. And then he also um, really dives into showing you the way in which outer planetary cycles, the newly modern discovered planets like Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, uh, in their long synodic cycles with each other and with other planets have um, uh, participated symbolically or, or can be can reflect the unfolding of history. And it's a really interesting book. And you'll get a lot of a lot of like modern uh, psychological and archetypal uh, astrology concepts from this book, which is great. There's another book if you want to learn about archetypal um, cosmology. Uh, I believe it's called The Archetypal Cosmos. Yeah, it's The Archetypal Cosmos by Kieran Legrice. <clears throat> This is, a, this is a book that's not as much about astrology as it is about archetypal cosmology, which is maybe the most standard modern cosmology that astrologers sort of buy into, modern astrologers. So um, along those same lines, there's also a book called <clears throat> The Archetypal Universe by Ren Butler. This is more of a cookbook where if you want to learn how to combine planetary symbols in um, sort of mundane archetypal manner, for example, a lot of the way that I do forecasting uh, on my YouTube channel would be rooted in uh, the archetypal combining of planetary symbols. And this is a great cookbook for, um, for doing that and for just improving your vocabulary. Um, there's an author in general, everything by uh, Liz Green, I would highly recommend because uh, Liz Green is arguably the modern master of uh, archetypal and psychological astrology. She was a student of Jung's, Carl Jung, the great modern depth psychologist. And this is where astrology and psychology have really fused together. It's, it's in large part thanks to her work and thanks to the work of Richard Tarnas. Well, she wrote a book, one of my favorites, called The Astrological Neptune. I just thought I'd give you a sample. It's a huge book about Neptune, and it's amazing. Um, and it may be too ambitious for some people, but if you look up absolutely anything by Liz Green and just uh, study her works, she has a great book called The Astrology of Fate. Highly recommend The Astrology of Fate for a good modern psychological um, textbook where she goes through the myths of the signs and she talks about the planets and, um, and there's many others too that she's written that are just absolutely fantastic. So uh, those are modern archetypal psychological texts that I would recommend. I also recommend anything uh, written and published by <clears throat> the CPA, which is the Center for Psychological Astrology. The CPA series is um, again, just, you know, the uh, whatever the Cadillac of um, you know of modern uh, depth psychology and astrology, <clears throat> you're going to find really good stuff there. Um, if you are interested in evolutionary astrology, which is another modern field of astrology, it's not something that I have so much interest in, but I did learn a lot about it in the beginning of my studies and practiced it for a while. Um, then the two authors that you're going to look for are going to be Stephen Forrest. Stephen Forrest has um, a, a vast audio library that you can check out uh, about the field and study of evolutionary astrology. And <clears throat> Jeff Green, 
uh, Jeffrey Wolf Green. Those those are the two sort of fountainheads, you could say, of modern um, evolutionary astrology. There are others too, but um, Mark Jones is another author that comes to mind if you're interested in modern evolutionary astrology. I have my theoretical, philosophical, and practical differences with evolutionary astrology, and so I, it's not, I consider myself a blend between traditional Hellenistic astrology and modern uh, depth psychology, modern archetypal astrology. So uh, I don't get into evolutionary so much, but <clears throat> for those out there who are looking for some, somebody to read in the evolutionary field, Mark Jones, um, Stephen Forrest. Stephen Forrest would be my top pick, um, and Jeffrey Wolf Green. Okay, um, now when it comes to looking at textbooks to learn more about traditional astrology, uh, this is going to be my, this is like my wheelhouse, right? Because this is what I teach. So um, there's a few textbooks that I use in my classes uh, that I would recommend. And I'm not going to make recommendations for a lot of like actual source texts because you have to be, you know, pretty, I don't know, you have to have some real mojo going to dive into reading actual, you know, Hellenistic source texts themselves, um, the translations of which are in English now for most of them. But you need somewhere to start and um, with ancient astrology, in my opinion. So let me give you some different uh, options. Now, if you're going to study Hellenistic astrology, starting from the ancient roots. The two books that I use are Ancient Astrology by Demetra George. This is a big textbook and learning. Remember, this is like, it's sort of like, if you're going to, if you're going to get into classical astrology, it's a bit like going to acupuncture school. Um, it, there's, there's a lot more uh, technical, philosophical, historical things that you have to learn. Um, but it's in terms of like the, the, the science of karma, it's just, um, unbelievably accurate in my experience. Uh, and whereas modern astrology may be more focused on a kind of therapeutic use and approach to astrology, ancient astrology is hands down more predictive and more of the kind of karmic analytics, I like to call it. But this book, even though it's big, I use it as textbook in my classroom, which people take a year to get through. So this is one of the textbooks that I use in my classes. You find that on my website too. And the other one is, of course, Chris Brennan of the Astrology Podcast, who wrote the book Hellenistic Astrology. This is another great beginner's book to Hellenistic ancient astrology that I have all my students check out. So those two books you're working through in my one-year program, uh, and to, in some cases into my second-year program. Uh, if you wanted to go into a more, say, medieval approach to astrology, it's also classical or traditional astrology, but it's a little, there's some differences. The tradition is evolving and changing. Um, there are two introductory textbooks that I would recommend to medieval astrology. One is On the Heavenly Spheres by Helena Avalar and Louis Ribeiro. You can find actually a podcast with them on traditional astrology um, on Chris Brennan's The Astrology Podcast and listen to them talk about traditional astrology. They have this book and then they have a follow-up book and I can't remember the name of it offhand, but if, if I can think of it, we'll put an image of it up. But there's another book that they wrote that's like a companion to this uh, beginner's book that just came out recently. So this is called On the Heavenly Spheres, a treatise on traditional astrology. It's not too bad, but it's, it's chock full of um, technical, um, um, tech, like basically techniques and methods and approaches to traditional astrology. Um, now, the other you know, introductory textbook that I really like for um, ancient astrology is Introduction to Traditional Astrology. Um, this is a combination of um, texts from Abu Mashar and Al-Kabisi. Uh, it's translated and edited by Ben Dykes. Uh, who's one of the current, you know, um, astrologers who's doing a huge amount of translating. So um, these are, um, let's see, yes, a joint translation of two classic medieval works, uh, Abu Mashar's abbreviation of the introduction to astrology and al kabisis introduction to astrology. Um, so this is, um, you know, a, a really nice start for medieval astrologers. Um, now, uh, if I was going to recommend one book for a, a classical source text, right? Just like some text that um, you could get into that is, is, gives you a taste for traditional astrology, it would be the Anthology by Vettius Valens, which a lot, large portions of which are going to be technically incomprehensible to people. But some of it's really nice just to read and get a feeling for it. But the other one that's more accessible, it's a little later in the Hellenistic tradition, uh, is by Firmicus Maternus. 
and it's his um, Mathesis. And so this is a text you can find online. I have the edition edited by James Holden. Um, and it's, it's just very approachable. And you, you just, just reading through it, you get a feeling for <clears throat> the craft language and the approach that ancient astrologers had. So if you were going to actually dive into an ancient source text, that's maybe a an, an slightly easier one to start with, along with Vettius Valens, who's even earlier, but there's, maybe it's a little bit more difficult to read. Um, you're going to not be able to get through portions of each because of how technical some of it is, but at any rate. Um, okay, then um, if I had to look at one of my favorite books um, that is an understanding of the traditional take on the houses, there's a book by Deborah Holding called The Houses, Temples of the Sky. This is a fantastic um, book that helps you to understand the traditional meanings of the houses. So that's a, a favorite of mine. Um, now, if we were to uh, get into another good sort of basic, a book that helps you to understand some of the major differences between modern astrology and traditional astrology, there's not really been a lot of books written on the topic, but the one that I would recommend, which um, won the Spica Award, International Book of the Year Award in 2001, it's called The Real Astrology by John Frawley. And it's kind of a, it's hilarious in places, you may find it too cynical or critical in other places, but it is a book uh, comparing traditional astrology with modern astrology. And for people who are first opening their eyes to some of the differences, a lot of people say it's just a really valuable book. Um, but you may find, you know, you may find that some of his takes, uh, he's more critical toward modern astrology. So, you know, you have to uh, filter some of that. Um, now, uh, if you want to learn horary astrology, if you're like, hey, you know, I'd, I'm really interested in horary astrology, which are the, the charts that we cast for specific predictive questions like, will my cat come back or will I get the job or, um, you know, will he call me back or something like that. The ancient textbook, the classical textbook, which came about kind of in the Renaissance uh, period, uh, is Christian Astrology by William Lilly. Now, this is the books one and two. The third book of that series is on natal astrology, but the horary textbook that really sparked the revolution or, or uh, reawakening of horary astrology in the modern era was the republication of Christian astrology in Europe. Now, it's available everywhere, and it's one of the best horary textbooks out there. But again, you're going to be reading kind of a, a traditional textbook. Um, the horary textbook revised edition <clears throat> by John Frawley. This is also um, uh, really, really essential reading. This is my favorite textbook. Of course, he has been my horary teacher. So, uh, you know, that's probably a big part of why I, I uh, love this book so much. <clears throat> There's another book um, by him that is called Horary Examples, Traditional Horary Astrology by Example. And this is a good accompaniment to his revised textbook. Both of these are texts that I use in my horary astrology course. So that's sort of a crash course of <clears throat> different texts that I would recommend for the different eras of astrology, modern, medieval, ancient, um, <clears throat> some history, stuff like that. Um, then uh, there's a few that I think are really interesting philosophically, and I'll go, let me just go over those next. Okay, so the books that I would recommend, if you want to learn more about the, one of the main philosophical distinctions in ancient astrology was the distinction between two concepts called spirit and fortune. Spirit was related to the sun, fortune was related to the moon. And the word spirit was also related to the word daimon in Greek. There is a, a wonderful book by Dorian Greenbaum called The Daimon in Hellenistic Astrology. And it really fleshes out some of the key philosophical ideas and thoughts of ancient astrologers. Uh, and looks at the figure of the daimon, who's also thought of in a sense like a spirit or a spirit guide. It's a really fascinating book. It's historical, it's philosophical, it's academic. I think if you like this kind of stuff, it's really engaging. You should be able to find a free PDF of it online, I believe, um, because uh, someone in one of my classes said that they were able to pick up a PDF of it somewhere for download it for free on online. Um, it's very expensive unless on because it's a I think it's a dissertation that she wrote. But anyway, um, it's expensive on Amazon, just so you know. Now, if you want to look at um, the 
ancient origins philosophically of uh, Western Hellenistic astrology. There's another <clears throat> uh, really great couple of books that I recommend. As most of you know, I practice bhakti yoga and um, kind of fuse together my interest in bhakti yoga with my interest in ancient Western astrology and ancient Western esotericism and hermeticism and things like that. So there are two books that have really informed my thinking on the connections between Eastern and Western philosophy at the dawn of astrology. One is called Universe and Inner Self in Early Indian and Early Greek Thought. This is a collection of essays that is absolutely beautiful on the connection between ancient sort of yoga philosophy and ancient um, uh, Vedic thinking and say the Pythagoreans, Orphics, um, uh, Platonists and, and things like that. So uh, really nice kind of East meets West. Uh, look at the East meets West philosophy. The other one is The Shape of Ancient Thought. Uh, by Thomas McKively. This book, uh, The Shape of Ancient Thought, is one of my favorite books uh, probably of all time. It's dense. It's very, again, historical and academic, but he does a really nice job. Oh, some of his work has been criticized because it, there's a lot of, he hypothesizes a lot, and he's trying to draw a conclusion um, uh, that that the East and the West are, their their philosophy, their mystical practices are very deeply uh, intertwined in the ancient world more so than we think they are. And so he goes, he, he offers speculation, he offers hypotheses, uh, some of which have been, you know, heavily criticized. But um, uh, for me, the reading his book was also just an amazing way of seeing so many philosophical parallels, whether they influence one another or not, between the East and the West. Um, and I'm, I'm very convinced by most of the arguments in his book. So um, at any rate, comparative studies in Greek and Indian philosophies. Uh, remember, Greek and Indian, uh, uh, you know, the, the Greek world, the Greek-speaking world, and the Indian world were two of the basically seedbeds for horoscopic astrology. So understanding the philosophical connections between the two regions of the world is very important. If you go back in my archives, there's a video I did called The Beliefs of Ancient Astrologers. And this also outlines... Um, many of the similar philosophical concepts that were shared in the East and the West around the dawn of astrology. Um, now, the other uh, book that's really important is, um, if you want to look into the, the origins of astrology, as one of the things that I'm very convinced of is that astrology is a form of divination. Um, and if you want to look into that argument that astrology is a form of divination, in other words, it's more like tarot and less like a science, um, that there's a scientific element to things like tarot or the astrology or I Ching, but it's ultimately still a form of divination. And what's the difference between, say, divination and science and things like that? Uh, the roots, looking at the roots of astrology as divination, there are two books that I think are really interesting. Uh, one is by Francesca Rocheberg called The Heavenly Writing. This is one of my favorite books, uh, Divination, Horoscopy, and Astronomy in Mesopotamian Culture. It looks at the divinatory roots of astrology, which it, it comes from an astral omen tradition in the Mesopotamian Babylonian region of the world. Um, there's also one of my, probably one of my favorite books of all time of, of any genre is also called the moment of astrology origins in divination by Jeffrey Cornelius. This book is um, just a, uh, a really deep look at the relationship between astrology and divination and Cornelius puts forth the hypothesis that astrology is actually a form of divination. Uh, because a lot of times people think, oh, it's a science. And then uh, divination is not unscientific, but it's not a science in the way that we think of it, uh, th think of, of a science. In other words, we're not saying that just like a, a tarot card that you pull, let's say you pull the sun card, the little baby sitting there, and sometimes it's associated with youth or spring or mm, let's say uh, the birth of a child. It's not that the sun card causes the child to be born. It's that the sun card, as a as a moment of divination, drawing the sun card, it reflects uh, through you know unknown principles, maybe synchronicity, through spirit, uh, that it reflects what's going to happen, but it's not causing what's going to happen. So, the same idea about astrology um, has probably existed since the 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 very dawn of of practicing with birth charts that this is not this is a science this is a science of signs and omens not causes if you're into that idea and you want to read more about that um 
which I think is a really philosophically important issue, then the moment of astrology, <clears throat> again, is probably the most important book of the modern era describing what astrology is and how it may work. Um, so that was a whole boatload of books uh, you'll be reading for, you know, easily a couple of years if you tried to read all of those. So hopefully you've got something that's good, you know, for, for you and where you're at and what you're interested in reading. I've probably literally read like, I don't know, five or 600, you know, different books on astrology. And so, um, you know, it's, I, and I, I've given away boxes and boxes of stuff that I didn't find so interesting or useful and kept those that I have. And everything that I've mentioned today, um, you know, like the, the Center for Psychological Astrology, I have probably everything they've published, everything Liz Green's published, you know, so the things that I recommend today are, the, are also things that if you like that author, dive into their work, uh, especially like in the modern era, like Liz Green, you can, her whole catalog of works is really, really great. Um, Demetra George, if you like ancient astrology, Chris Brennan and the Astrology Podcast, if you like Hellenistic astrology, Ben Dykes, if you're interested in the history of astrology and ancient classical astrology, Jeffrey Cornelius and John Frawley, if you're interested in divination and uh, horary astrology, things like that. So some of these names, um, there's a lot more written by them and done by them and audio series done by these, these people. And these have been some of the biggest influences on my career. Um, there's probably some that I'm missing, but uh, I've been asked this question so many times, I just thought I'd do this video and hopefully you find it helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to email me, info at nightlightastrology.com. Otherwise, um, happy reading. And anytime you have any questions or comments you want to leave in the comments section about the books you've read or that you're reading or any questions about anything like that, you can, you can put something in the chat box too. All right, take it easy, everyone.